All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Bring the Juice. Get your piss hot, say stop. Fired up. We have uh, some dogs in the room today. Some dogs. I got Mikey Keen, QB1 for the dogs. Right here on Bring the Juice. We're in the studio. Mikey, good to have you back, man. Hey, glad to be here. Appreciate you having me on, brother. First we gonna fuck, then we gonna fall, then we let it pop, don't let it go. You know, I just told you the... Uh, the notes for the show, but realistically, it comes down to last time you were on the show, we kind of uh, just knew, just met each other at that right. point. Yep, first time. It's We've, crazy. Our our friendship has blossomed since then. I would agree. Blossomed yes, exactly. And uh, no, but you were in a QB battle at the time, and now you know you you've had a year under your belt. You lived in Fresno for a period of time. You understand what Valley Grit and being part of the Fresno State culture is about. Yep. You are the undisputed QB one of Fresno State right now. Talk to me just about the difference between getting to prepare for a season as you know, hey, it's I'm driving the boat versus like I'm in a competition. For sure. I think that it's a completely different perspective on my behalf. But yeah. at the same time, I got to keep things under wraps for myself. Um, mentally wise, I can't be complacent with where I'm at. Right. Just because I have that sort of title does not mean that I can just stop and everything just begins to settle down. And this is far from where I, where I want to be. And I know that where I want to go. So at that point, it really just has to ramp up in my process and my work ethic and my leadership, which I think that I did a good job with this off season and having that approach um, and showing guys that, I mean, Hey, this every single day you have to make, make yourself better. So that was really my perspective coming into it. Obviously it was, a, it was a great feeling. Um, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, every single year I've been in college, it's been either as a backup or in a quarterback battle. Um, so having this off season to be able to just kind of take all the one reps, I, th- I think that it was huge for our receiver room and for myself um, as far as timing and things like that. This is the most, this is the best timing that I've had with a group of receivers since right. I've been in college. So I'm super fired up about that coming this coming year. Um, and it was ultimately just a, a, an entire d- different process because now I'm looked at as like the veteran in the quarterback room. Um, although I may not be the oldest guy, I'm one of the older guys now, which is kind of crazy to think about. Yeah. But comes at you fast. Man. It, it re- really does. It really does. Um, but it's kind of a unique experience for me, for sure. I get to help these younger guys um, learn something from me, take what they want from me, and 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 apply it into what they want to do. Or if they don't want to apply it, they don't have to apply it. Everyone's their own person. Everyone's their own quarterback. I think that that's the special thing about being quarterbacks is that we're not all the same, but at the same time, we're the only one that knows what the fuck we're doing. So yeah. we all have each other's respect. I talked to these guys the other day about it um, in our room, and I talked with our quarterback coach as well. We were all there um, as we started game planning for Michigan. Um, and... Uh, So anyways, really just talked about that and how we have to support each other no matter who's in the game. I said that we were all contributing factors to whoever is – or to the team in a winning manner, no matter if you're on scout team, no matter if you're signaling, if you're the backup quarterback, the starting quarterback, every single person in that QB room is playing a tremendous role in in the factors of winning. So I explained that to them. Um, All those guys are leaders, and so it's been cool. It's been a cool process for sure. That's awesome, man. I mean, that that's a huge step in leadership, too. And I, and I know that, you know, it's hard to uh, – we kind of talked about it earlier last year, but I think we can even recap, circle back on it, where it's like, as a quarterback, you're, you're meant to be a leader, right. right? And when you're going through as the new guy and you're competing with somebody, it's like, you know, not only are we competing with reps, we're also kind of competing with leadership, which is weird when you're with the guy in the same room all day. It's like, no doubt. It's, it almost becomes a pissing contest, and you're just like, I'm not that guy. I also, and, and, I, and dude, I love Logan. I like, do too. Like, I hope he goes, and freaking wins Big Sky Player of the Year. No doubt. One of my, but one of my greater friends. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So, and I know you guys had that dynamic. Exactly. Um, but, you know, the quarterback role is meant to be a leadership role. Yes. In in sports, there you know you could have if you're playing soccer, really any position could be your captain, no right? Doubt. In baseball, maybe your catcher or pitcher you might say, but like or your big slugger could be your captain. But in football, especially, right? Like your quarterback better be a, a freaking captain. Yeah. Um, and you kind of were put in this position last year where it just it just makes it a little more difficult because there was a deciding factor, and I think. 
I'm happy that you finally get the the opportunity to be like, yo, I understand that uh, you want to keep, you want someone breathing down your back, bro. Right. Uh, iron sharpens iron. You do not want to get complacent, and I and that's awesome that you said. That. I'm so glad you said that because so many people do, right? No doubt. There's there's position groups out there in, in different teams where they know they're the guy. They're hyped up by the program as the guy. And uh, they're like, nobody's going to touch me. I'm going to play. I'm going to be a superstar. I don't need right. to practice. It's almost like Booby Miles, right? Yeah, exactly. Friday Night Lights. Yeah, it's Booby Friday Miles. Lights, yep. It's like, man, I don't need to do shit. I'm, I'm out here. Give me the ball. I'm going to get me. And it's like, yes, you're a great player. You're doing good things for the program. You're, you're hyped up. But are you really putting in the dirt dog behind the scenes work right. without that edge, right? And clearly you got it. But from a leadership standpoint, like, being a quarterback, having the keys to the boat, saying you could go drive, and then you elevating the quarterbacks to be like, hey, listen, you need to own your role, man. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to hoop. But if I go down, you need to know what the hell you're doing. Like, right. you caring about that speaks volumes to just the, you know, one, the 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 lack of, like, you're not a self-centered individual. You're, you're a team-first guy. For sure. And uh, additionally, just, that is a veteran move, man. That is a veteran move. No doubt. I really think that, in a funny way that the best thing for me was to lose that damn job at UCF because the perspective that I gained and the appreciation that I gained for the sport and really reevaluating myself, it was, I mean, nothing else could have given me that mindset of who I was and what I wanted to be known as, as a football player, as well as a man. Right. Because coming into this situation, I understood how to be, I've understood how to be a backup. I've understood how to be a, a starter that wasn't supposed to be starting. I was just thrown in there. Mm -hmm. um, I've came in and played in games. I've won big games. I've lost games as well. Gator Slayer, continue. Yeah, yep, <laughs> appreciate that. But uh, I had a whole bunch of perspective coming into this thing, and I knew how it was going to play out. Um, coming here, knowing that it was going to be a competition with Logan, of course, we're in sticky positions. It's yeah. me versus him. It's whoever the team thinks, whoever they don't think. Right. That whole bullshit. Right. And it's it's going on in the country. Yeah. And now there's media and NIL and, and all, all these other elements. NIL, it's all like, those different elements. Everyone's got a say. And everyone, everyone has a say. Everyone is thinking their own thing. But it really came down to me just trying to handle business and leave all the other shit out of it. Right. Because at that point, I think that there could have been like animosity in, in the room. And that's really not what we were looking for. Uh -huh. Um we weren't looking for that at all. We both understood that whoever's going to get the job, uh, their job was to win, and whoever didn't get the job, they were going to help us win games regardless, which right, right. Logan did exactly that. Um, me and him have had a lot of conversations about it uh, and wishing the best of Montana. I think he's going to do great things there. But it's a unique position to be in, and I recently went back to my high school because they're having a, a quarterback battle too, and I talked to those guys. I'm like, look, man. You're going to get competition wherever the hell you go. Always. You guys could be at two different schools, two different lesser schools, and you guys should be the man. But you wanted to be here. You guys wanted to compete for this thing. You guys wanted to – you guys knew that only one quarterback was going to get the job. This is how it is all over the country. This is how it is when you get to college. This is how it is when you get to the NFL, unless you got like a badass vet, like a Rodgers or something like right, that. Right, right. But – Nonetheless, it was just really relaying the message to those guys because I've been there. I can speak on it because I've been there. I lost that shit. I lost the job. I've right. won the job. I've been in both perspectives. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've worked for it. I thought that I've earned it, and then I didn't earn it. Yeah, yeah. Shit happens. That's what the hell, it does. What the hell life's about. So yeah. What it's, uh, I mean, 10% of what happens in life, it, or it's 10% of what happens to you in life, and then 90% how you respond to that. Of course. So... How are you going to respond? How are you going to choose to become and move forward from the situation? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Coach Pat, actually, he, he showed us a video from Coach Sark at Texas, and he's talking about uh, – this is a really cool bit, by the way. I think about this one all the time. It's uh, being a thermostat rather than a thermometer. Mm. A thermometer, it tells you the temperature, but a thermostat dictates the temperature. So no matter what the circumstances are, a thermostat's going to say, all right, this is what it is. Or a thermometer's going to say, this is what it is. Right. Whether it's a thermostat, you want it to be hot, you make it hot. You want it to be cold, you dictate the circumstance. Right, right. So I think of that in, in a lot of things in life, and I think it can be applicable to a lot of things for sure. Absolutely. Well said, like a seasoned vet. <sighs> I'm kidding right, me? Man. You kidding right. me? <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's, it's especially important. Being and let's just talk. Let's brush one more time on the leadership side of things. 
Um, understanding now, like, you know, I think you came in and really embraced the culture of Fresno State extremely well, better than a lot of guys who transfer in. And I know you're a quarterback, so you kind of have to. And you could, you're, you're not, you're not dumb, Mike. Like, you read the room, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a Valley V guy. This is what I do, right. man. Like, I'm a Valley Grit dude. And, uh, you know, also utilize your assets. I mean, I, I, I said from the start when you transferred in, uh, and I mean, I did the same thing with one of my really good friends, Marcus McMarion. It's like. First day of school, new guy, you're going to be a dickhead or you're going to be a friend to him, man? Right. You're going to extend an olive branch, be like, hey, this is where we go eat lunch. Or, hey, this is where the weight room is. Or, hey, this is where we put our, this is where we put our clothes away or stuff like that. Or you're going to be like, let him, let him go struggle a little bit. Yeah. I think everybody remembers their first, first time of school at a new school, uh, first day in college out of your dorms, first day of football practice in a locker room. Do you remember the first couple of guys that were nice to you? I of do. course. Yes. You always do, man. Yep. And I think you took that, though, with as a veteran with a grain of salt and understood I had to compete. But now that you're a leader and you get to set the standard, mm-hmm. help set the standard, and understanding, like, the pride and tradition of Bulldog football, the history of it. And, like, let's, 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 let's cut the shit here, man. Like, last year, you guys, you guys had a, a ro- little bit of a roller coaster there, right? Sure. You got hot. You got cold. You finished hot, mm-hmm. right? Now it's fresh slate. You're a, you guys are a veteran room. You have the opportunity to be a leader in the room. Congratulations on being a captain. Thank you. Appreciate Welcome. that. Welcome. It's awesome. At well earned. Well earned. What do you want to set the standard for for this football team? Because you set the tone. Right. Right. I think the biggest message uh, throughout the entire off season, and Coach Ward has done a phenomenal job with that. Shout out uh, Andy. Yeah. Shout out Andy. Yes, sir. Uh, He's done a great job, and I think that we've handled his um, coaching style super well uh, this offseason as far as just finishing. Like you said, we got hot, we got cold, we finished hot. It is what it is. But if you're unable to take what happened in the past, learn from it, and right. apply it into what you're going to do for the next year, it might as well just never happened. Right. So the biggest message this offseason has been to finish – um, as far as like in personal regards, I got to stay healthy. I got to, I got to keep my nutrition up. I got to keep my weight on. I got to put myself in the best position to play as many games as I possibly can and be in as, in as many snaps as I possibly can to help right. this team win. Um, but overall, I think that it's been a huge message to, yes, we have a big ass game coming up. Sure. We play a huge game. It's a great opportunity for Fresno state, for the Valley, for this team to yeah. set the tone for the entire year. But we have another 11 games after that. Right. So it's Michigan and beyond. Right. It starts with them, but then we have to go beyond that. We can't just overlook the entire schedule because we have a big game one. Right. We got to be able to come out and be ready to kick some ass game one. Yeah. Handle business and things like that. But at the same time, we got to be ready to play an entire season too. Right. We got to keep that in perspective and keep stacking and keep chipping away one week at a time. And handle business every single week, and things should take care of themselves because I think that we got a really good squad this year. I think you got a great squad this year. Preparing for, let's just call it the number one team in the country versus preparing for the number one hundred and one team in the country rankings, which me and you both know from from being inside those buildings. That's all outside noise. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's all BS, right? right? Who cares? How do you stay in a straight line? Personally, as Mikey Keen, how do you stay in a straight line of just like, I don't care who's in front of me. This is this is this is what I do to prepare. I don't care if it this team has been 0-90 in the last 90 games or 90 and 0. I don't give a shit. I'm staying cool, calm, and collected across the way. For sure. I think that it's just gotta be the the routine of everything. And I've been in college football long enough that I have my own routine and I have my process and things like that. So staying on top of that, staying on top of my film work. Um, and, and studying our game plan, uh, knowing it inside and out and, and understanding where we're trying to attack them, knowing the, the depth charts and things like that and understanding what they're trying to do as a defense and how right. we can attack that. Um, it's really the same thing every single week as far as process goes. It gets pretty monotonous, but you got to find ways to not make it monotonous. you got to be excited for this shit. I mean, f- we're playing college football. Let's go, baby. We practice – I don't know how much more we practice than we a lot, play. A lot, a lot, a lot more than we get to play, though. I've said it. I've said it for years, man. You get 
let's say college football, 365 days in the year, yep. right? You're practicing for what, 330 of them? Yeah. 330 days. Yeah. You get a guaranteed, you get 12 game days. Guaranteed 12 games. 60 minutes a game. Yeah. You're, I don't, I'm not a math guy off the top of my head, but that's a lot for a little. It's a lot for a little. So taking advantage of those and having a glad to be here mentality, we get to do this shit. You get to do this. You don't got to do this. You get to wake up at 6 a.m. and go get after it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we're in the, the prime years of our life and our, in our football careers. I mean, some guys are playing in the NFL and shit like that. That's great. But at the same time, college football is something special. Special. And Always I, will be. I mean, it's something that I want to be a part of for the rest of my life. It's something that I truly have just grown up, like, dreaming of being a part of. So keeping that perspective, um, no matter how you're feeling – uh, I don't know if you watched the the receiver show. I did watch the receiver. I loved it. I loved it too. George I made my Kittle, parents watch it. It's great. George Kittle is a freaking icon. He's awesome. And I picked up a couple of things from him as far as from that show. And I'm sure that he has more shit that he does. But the manis- manifestation and and how he talked to himself and Four games. and and things like that 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 was that was awesome to me. I really liked that. How he's got a up shoulder. He's telling himself he's not hurt. He doesn't yeah. feel anything. Breathe in the good. Yeah, breathe in the good. <laughs> Exhale the bad. Exhale the bad. That was awesome. And so I've kind of like picked up on some things like that and keeping a perspective like, shit, dude, like he has so much fun out there. And I'm like, oh my God. Sometimes it can get overwhelming and shit like that. Of course. I mean, there's a lot at at, at stake. I mean, you got some pressure on you. I mean, I play from quarterback. Right, right. It's all good or all bad. You know, I mean, there's really no in between. Yeah. So it comes with the job. It it comes with the job. But you got to keep things in perspective at some times and just really take it in. I mean, we're here. I'm. I'm in my fourth year of college football. I got one year of eligibility left after this, so it's coming. It's coming quick for me. Um, but no, just handling handling business as, as far as the preparation goes into the week, and I really think that it just separates the championship teams from those that don't really end up handling yeah. business. I mean, we come off a huge win last year against Purdue, and then we lay an egg versus Eastern Washington. It always it's it's, it's notorious for happening in college football too. Trap coming games. off coming off a big win. And playing a lesser team or quote unquote lesser team the next right. week, and you play down to the level of whoever it is. Yep. When you guys know that you're a better team, so you think your shit don't stink. Exactly, exactly. So we got to have a mentality every single week, and especially playing at home in Bulldog Stadium. Coach Franklin had a talk with us the other night, and it was it was awesome. We went through the entire history of the stadium, how it was built. Jim Sweeney, oh, Coach Pat, um, Coach Tedford coming back. Every single piece into building that the expanders everything else um all of that and the and just the pr- the true pride and tradition of that um and it was super special it was it was really yeah. cool getting the guys that are new to this program to really understand that fuck it's it's an honor to play in that stadium it, it's a special spot man it is i've interviewed a lot of guys obviously who played in that stadium but i've interviewed a lot of guys who have played as an opponent in that stadium and Jack Coletto is one of the best ones. So Oregon State came here a few years back. Right. And Jack Coletto, he played like running back, fullback, wildcat quarterback, linebacker, safety. He's a, he's a fullback now for the Seahawks. Oh, I know this guy. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, Oregon yeah, State yeah. dude. Yeah, I remember. Big this white guy. boy. Yep. And honestly, what it came down to, it was it was like the end of the game, and and Oregon State was on like the four. Yeah. Ran it in, beat us at home. It was a heartbreaker, and. I interviewed him and I was like, "Hey man, I played for the Dogs. My brother was on that team. I was there. It was a great. It was a great game. Yeah, we know. ended up on the wrong side of it." He goes, "Dude, he's like that was probably one of the most live environments I've ever been in in my life." You talk to guys against San Jose State. San Jose State, they they act like it's some big, you know, Fresno State versus San Jose State rivalry, which it is, but they know damn well when you come to Fresno, it is 10 times more lit than when you go play at San Jose State. It's right. not even close. Yeah. All that to be said, like, I think the details matter. Fresno's in a very special place. It's unlike a lot of places in, uh, in, in both the conference, even the West Coast, realistically. For sure. You know, yeah. there, there's, there's some great programs on the West Coast, but I don't think people care about it that are from here as much. No you go to LA, there's a lot of people in LA. I don't think that many people care about UCLA's football success in LA compared to how many people in the Valley care about Fresno State's football success. I think especially now with conference realignment and those LA schools going to the Big Ten, it's a completely different game. Yeah. And even the schools, um, even Stanford and Cal uh, going to the ACC, I mean, it's, it's going to be a completely 
I can't believe I, it's it's. I'm sad that the Pac-12 is gone. I was a yeah. Pac-12 12 kid growing up. Pac-12 after dark, all of that. I loved it, and so I'm kind of sad. But shit, this is the this is the day and age we live in. So time and a place, baby. Exactly. So now that you you know, as you continue to grow and blossom as a quarterback, and I, I like that you brought up the show receiver. I really love the perspective of those guys, man. Right. I really liked everybody. I did too. I, I I really liked everybody. George Kittle. I don't think anybody on planet Earth has more fun playing football than George no, Kittle. No, I liked Amon Ra as well. I liked him. A His lot. mindset. It's crazy. It ins- respect the hell I out know. of it. Devonte. People. I think Devonte's perspective is extremely unique. The guy is a vet. No doubt. Feed him the ball. Yeah. Feed the ball. You got Devontae Adams' team, throw it 15 times. Right. Gives a shit, right? Yeah. Who else is there? JJ. JJ was hurt. I feel like he didn't get to be seen as much. Not. Played uh, nine games, 1,000 yards, though. That's pretty fucking crazy. That's what I'm saying. And then Debo. I didn't really know much about Debo. He I seems kind not. of like a, a quiet cat. Uh, yeah, for sure. He's one of the boys, man. No doubt. I, t- I, I, I told Mac, I was like, dude, you got to have that Debo mindset, man. Yeah. I, and I think he's really leaning into that right now. <laughs> uh, no, I was like, you, could, you gotta think you're a Debo Sable type dude, bro. And uh, no, nah, it was great. But all that to be said, you know, I also watched the the Netflix documentary before that called Quarterback. Yep. Um, I like receiver better for sure, but I liked quarterback. But it makes me think of the question of who are some guys in your age in your game right now that because I know we've watched some of the legends right in our in our era. Who are some guys you're like? Okay, I'm taking. I, I I'm watching him on film, or I'm I'm watching Sunday Night Football. Hell, right. and I'm like, I like that. I'm putting that tool in my toolbox. Who are some guys? Our systems relate, and the most te- the teams that come up most frequently on our film are the Bengals, uh, the Lions, uh, the Vikings, and then we get some a good amount of the Chargers film too. Which those are all great quarterbacks. You got Burrow with the Bengals, uh-huh. Goff with the Lions, Cousins who was with the Vikings. Um, and Justin Herbert uh, with the Chargers. So, <clears throat> watching those guys and seeing their process and, and, their, and, and the biggest thing that I picked up, and Jared Goff does a phenomenal job with, is, is his feet and his eyes. Right. Good feet, good eyes. So, he does a great job getting through his progressions with his feet, and it's something that we've really watched in the quarterback room, and, and I've studied on my own as well. Um, and he does a really good job. And, and watching him just kind of – go through his process and, and what he's seen as far as the defense goes and his coverage recognition to play action passes. He does he does everything super great, and, and it's a testament to them having a phenomenal season last year. And I'm excited to watch those guys because watching him in film, I was a fan of the Lions, and yeah. then seeing this show with Amon Ra, I became even a bigger fan. And then great, I like I liked, uh, Dan Campbell too. <laughs> he's, a, he's an awesome coach, so I'm, I like those guys a lot. Yeah. Joe Burrow does a phenomenal job of giving his guys a chance to make some plays. Now, he's got some f- dudes there. But he's, all, he's feeling like he's had some dudes for a while. He's got some dudes, but at the same time, his ball placement and his process as well, I think that his precision and his anticipation um, is phenomenal. Another guy is Tua as well with yeah. the Dolphins. And he gets a lot of shit. And, I mean, it is what it is. I'm a Tua guy. I like Tua. But the anticipation that he throws with is – insane like some of these throws that i've seen you just don't you don't see them when you're watching the nfl red zone yeah and but these throws that he's making i mean now he's got some dudes too he's got a couple dudes he can let that he can let that shit go and let them run under it but he's throwing with phenomenal anticipation across the middle of the field um so seeing that from him it's really cool to watch especially with concepts that we're running too they do a lot of unique stuff on the offensive side of things it may not be the exact same as us but um watching him has been super cool so those have been like really the main guys for me and, yeah. and, and Kirk Cousins as well. He does a great job getting through his processes and, and great player too. I became a fan of him after watching quarterback. Yeah, um, me too, man. And then Justin Herbert's got a insane, he's got a cannon. He can, he can just let it go. Another one is Matthew Stafford too. He's in that same category as Justin <laughs> Herbert. Dude's got a freaking cannon. I mean, he's just yeah. got a hose on him. Uh, but no, watching watching those guys, it, it's been super cool, and and seeing their processes and trying to see what I can gain from. All right, well, versus this coverage, this is how he's playing it. Maybe I can think in that in that direction as right. well, and then taking it into my game and seeing what what works for me. Because everything works differently for every single quarterback. Of course, some things are gonna work better for one versus another. So, trying to see as many perspectives as you can, and taking what you want to try and ultimately build your game up the best that you can. We interviewed Bobby Brown. Uh, from the Los Angeles Rams a couple weeks ago in Newport. Great trip, great trip. Oh, I bet. But he was uh, 
we were talking. You know, he has Super Bowl ring. Right. And we were just kind of – he's third youngest player ever to win the Super Bowl ring, actually. It's crazy. It's crazy. 21 years old. Jeez. He was talking about the – Matthew Stafford. Yeah. And his dedication level of – you know, he came in in his dynamic with Cooper Cup. Yeah. And, dude, like, hearing him talk, like, I didn't even feel like I was – I mean, even, like, right now, I don't feel like I'm interviewing if they were just talking. But, like, with Ma- with him talking about Matthew Stafford, about his chemistry with Cooper Cup, I was just, like, a kid in a candy shop just, like – Yeah. Like, what do you mean? He's, like, they got here. They ate breakfast together every day. They go and throw the route a 100 times a day. And, or whatever it was, and it was just like he just knew. And ultimately, that same shit they did in, you know, April, it won us the Super Bowl. Like that scenario won us the Super Bowl. He knew. He's like, there's a lot of ways you throw that ball, mm-hmm. and he knew exactly where Coop liked it. Hit him on it, won the Super Bowl. Yeah. And it, just to hear, like you always hear, like constant repetition, like get put the work in, blah 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 blah. blah. I don't know what more a prime of an example you want than a guy practicing a certain play day in and day out when no one's looking. It's not glam- – back shoulder fade. Yeah. It's not glamorous, right? No. But if you could get that down with the guy, it's unguardable. Exactly. And they just did that to the point where it's like he knew when he broke this way, did this, angled at that, Stafford let it go at the perfect time. Now you got – it's different between winning a Super Bowl ring and not. That's right. crazy. No. I mean, that guy – Cooper Cup's phenomenal as well. Oh. And just watching on the film and stuff like that and the positions that they put him in, I mean, that's their guy. Yeah. But now you add Puka to the situation, and it's like, shit. Got a couple guys. This is going to be a dangerous offense because Puka's a stud too. So I'm excited to see them. Rams are a sleeper right now. They, they really are. They really are. I'm a Steelers fan, uh, so but I appreciate some good football. I love watching good quarterback play and stuff like that. That's where my mindset has kind of developed. Right. Um. But, uh, no, I'm super excited to watch some good offense this year. It'll be fun. Speaking of good offenses and quarterbacks, this year, this uh, this week while we're recording, a clip popped up of um, a flag football quarterback claiming he's better oh, shit. than Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. <laughs> now, I don't want to get too far into it because I already you know, went on my little rant. But I just – you know what? I went on my little rant. I said my two cents. I had about 95% of people back me up. There was a 5% out there that they were like, it's a different game. You don't understand. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Like, I saw the I saw the film today. I saw the tape. And I wasn't like, oh, this makes sense now. Patrick Mahomes is dicing them up. <laughs> Lamar, okay, let's say Patrick Mahomes isn't mobile. Mm-hmm. G- give it to Lamar. Right. Give give it I, most guys and people are saying I'm all here's one thing people aren't considering okay this quarterback who said he's better than Patrick Mahomes Cannon no he has a little wiggle he does like this little soldier boy drop all this weird like like he's like a hip hop dancer when he's right. running yeah but I'm looking at who's trying to pull his flags <laughs> okay and they're just not I- it. I'm like, gotcha. you're telling me Sauce Gardner is going to let that guy get past him? I don't think you realize how fast their feet are, man. Like, it, it doesn't matter. You're not, oh, you didn't pull his flag. Yeah, he's just going to, like, I don't know what the rules are as far as can they run into you or not. You're not going to be able to get past the line of scrimmage with these guys. Right. I don't know. It's it's a tricky situation because I saw Mahomes commented on Twitter with the with the, with the, with the, the eyes. Cent, the 50, he, saw, he commented with the 50 cent thing. What did he say fuck me? <laughs> so he commented with that and he kind of got roped in there i don't know he's in a tough position because he's not going to respond or say anything back there's there's no point but at the same time i, I mean you can't say nothing though and that's the great that's the great thing is there's gonna be a fucking tryout and they're gonna pick the best guy so we'll see what the hell happens i do know like you're saying this guy's got a little wiggle he's got some hip-hop moves only thing that i can think of is maybe his benefit could be that these moves are not working out in an NFL game atmosphere or in any yeah. tackle atmosphere. So maybe these, maybe the NFL guys aren't even going to think to do some shit that he's going to do because it's just not it built in their system. <sighs> I have no fucking idea. It could be. It could be so, something like that. But if we're just talking pure best quarterbacks in the world, it's Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Is it's not this guy. I didn't say oh, it has to that. be Patrick Mahomes. But 
it's one thing to be like, I think I'm if he if the statement was, I think I'm better than most NFL quarterbacks. Okay, that's broad. It's an argument. Who's the best NFL quarterbacks? Like, is there some really bad arm? I'm not saying there's bad arm, but is there like I'm not gonna th- I don't want to throw shade at anybody, but like there's some quarterbacks where you're like, okay, you know, I, I can maybe see that. That even needs to work. If you're an NFL quarterback, you're really freaking good at playing football. I mean, I don't care if you're six string on a certain team. You are really freaking good. Hey, kudos to him. And sorry that I don't know his name, but it's like Daryl or well, something. Whoever his marketing guy is, that's a smart dude. So here's look the, at look at us sitting here talking about this. Hey, guy. he's is he? Is that what I'm saying? All publicity is good publicity. I will say, and I talked about it with Comstock actually in the last episode. The USA coach came up to us at Radio Row. And he was trying to get it come on the pod. We just we had like Chuck Liddell lined up or something like that. And he's like, bro. I said, so how good are we going to be for Team USA? I was like, we're going to have some dogs. Tyreek, Justin Jefferson. He's like, oh, they're probably not going to make the team. And you're just <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, yeah. like, what do you mean, bro? They're not going to make the team. He's like, yeah, they're probably not good enough to make the team. I'm like, you're telling me Tyreek Hill's not shifty enough to be on the Team USA freaking flag football team. And then, you know, again, I, 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 I'm, I probably – Talked too much smack early without watching the tape, but now I've watched the tape. <laughs> I've watched hours worth of Team USA flag football. No, the answer is no. I went on a yeah. I had I had a. I went down a rabbit hole. I I went down a rabbit hole today too. I had a little break in in between my classes, and I found myself back in like 2022 for like the USA uh, flag football team Instagram account. Yeah. So I went I went through the I went through my shit today. Couple archives. Couple archives, yeah. Saw some stuff today. Um, so that's how I spent my little break. I was in the treatment room getting my arm uh, taken care of, and I was watching those. So yeah, I did. I did a little research of my own. I'm still gonna stay uh, stay unbiased and see what the hell happens. So I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see who gets the job. I, I do. Th- <laughs> it's a bold move, Cotton. I do <laughs> think. I do think. Listen, let's be honest about the Pro Bowl games right now. They've gotten a little boring. The Pro Bowl, yeah. It's got a little boring. So, I used to love the Pro Bowl. Me too. Hawaii, baby. Sidetracking. Yeah, sidetracking. Well, it was always Hawaii. Well, it was Orlando for a little bit. It was Orlando. They went AZ for one year. Oh, they did. Holy shit. That was Odell's rookie year. I have about I had about 50 videos of Odell and warm-ups going nuts. You know, remember how he used to warm up? Like, this dude would have some crazy cleats on. Only one-handed the entire time. I was so excited. I was sick that entire week. I was... So sad because I thought I was gonna be able to make it, and then freaking I, I was I, I was fine. Yeah, I went to the game. It was it was a great atmosphere. I mean, it was JJ Watt. Who were the QBs? Who were the? Uh, what year was this? I have no idea. This had to have been like 2014 or 2013. Whatever Odell's rookie year was, this uh, was it. Maybe, and maybe like Eli. It, it, it might have been Aaron Rodgers. I Drew have, Brees. Drew Brees. It might have been Brees. 2015. Okay, 2015. Who's quarterbacks in that? I know J.J. Watt was there. I remember taking pictures of him. Of AD, him or with him? Of him, of him. Like Antonio little, Brown. Like, Antonio Brown was there. And I'm a huge Steelers fan. So I was eating that up. A.B., side note, funniest account on Twitter. Just got just to gotta throw that out there. A.B.C.T.E. A.B.C.T.E. S.P.N. <laughs> he, he's honestly being consistent. I don't know if it's him or not. There's no way it's him. I have no idea. But that is, that is a hilarious Twitter account. Braid, Andrew yes, Luck. Luck. Andrew Luck. Luck was my guy. Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers. That sounds about right. Yep. Ben Roethlisberger and Charlie. Great lineup. That's a lineup right it there. A, it, was a gr- it was a great lineup. What a squad. I had to sidetrack with that because that was a core memory for me, for sure. No, that's fine. No, but I think the Pro Bowl games, it's getting a little dry. Right. I think you say, hey, you know what, Team USA people, flag football people, one, they need a good game to practice against. For sure. Two, I, you just said all publicity is good publicity. I don't disagree with that. I do think it's like, hey, let us come out and compete with these guys. Let us show you what we're working towards for the Olympics. Because when they come here, which we're hosting the Olympics in 2028. No doubt, yeah. We better, Molly, it better be a lights out, just a, just a, just a dog walk, right? Why not? You're so good, Team USA flag football players. Go ahead. Let's go our best. And I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, Mikey, they, NFL players, they're not going to say it right now. They're too focused on the season. Yeah. By the time Pro Bowl goes around, if some of those clips resurface about how the NFL players won't make the squad and they line up this game, 
best believe they're going to tie their shoes that day and go out and they might. make a statement. They just might. And I'm excited for it because, shit, I hope they just add a whole bunch of stuff to the Olympics because I was, I was locked in this year. I was sitting yeah? there. That was when I was home right before fall camp, so I just got to chill with my parents. So, right. shit, it was Olympics every single what day. What were you watching? Uh, I was watching the swimming um, and track. That was yeah. really it. I watched a little bit of gymnastics. Um, those they're just phenomenal. You know what I watched is freaking synchronized swimming, and that was incredible to watch. Yeah, I have no idea how the fuck they do that because impressive. It was it was just insane. The movements, the it's it's synchronized swimming. Synchronized I'm like, holy and shit. they're swimming. But it was phenomenal to watch those those athletes and yeah. Holy shit! Don't even get me started on the on the on the basketball because that was awesome to watch too. Got intense there for a sec. It did get intense there for a second, and and I mean I'm a LeBron guy. I think MJ's the goat, but it was just it was awesome to watch because I've never I've never I've always been like a kind of a Steph hater because it's always like Steph versus LeBron and they needed all, each other. They need I know seeing those guys together it was crazy. That uh, what was the semifinals against Serbia? <laughs> Oh my goodness! That, I feel like I was in Rocky Four. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It, it was just, I mean, yeah, America, dude. The I got to give a quick shout out to the women's rugby team too. Oh, it had me fired up for a little bit. They had some dogs on their team. They the do, one yeah. chick, I forget her name, Melina or Malia. I know, I know you're. Talking I don't know about who you're talking about. She's, she's active she, on social media. Very active right? on social media. Great yep. personality. Yep, she's went badass. out, dogged people, and I'm like, badass. damn. I do think, though, they won bronze, which is great, because that was a big deal for them. No doubt. You got to come back and win it, though. For, you for got, sure. You, you got to win it for Team USA in Olympic in, – in, I'm sorry, in the uh, USA Olympics. We were, we were talking about it in the in the locker room a little bit because it was still going on as we were going through fall camp and stuff like that. But there's some dudes from L.A. I I'm know. like, shit, it's coming to the – I mean, we were talking about it a little bit. It's coming to the United States. It's coming to the – yeah. So we were like, shit, that's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Be cool. Have to go. No doubt. What about the announcement recently of black uniforms? Oh, yeah. Tell me the tell me you, the the QB one captain perspective of of how this all came about. Those are fire. Those They're are sexy. Sick. They're sexy. They are very sexy. I wore the all blacks in, back in my, back in my day. Yeah. And let me tell you, you feel like an Avenger. What year was that? We were freshman year. So twenty sixteen. Who was the QB then? We had like seven that year. Fuck. Zach. Okay, me and Marcus, um, me and Marcus were talking about this. McMarion? And we did, yeah, we didn't know because Marcus was there when we did the the reveal. Oh, really? So we didn't know if Derek was the last QB to wear. No. Them. Okay. No, hell no. All right, we were way off then. No, we lost to San Jose State by one point. No shit. Yeah. There was right. like five hundred people there. Yeah. So those it's raining. Those <laughs> things are sick, and the I'll give a little little background story. So the unveiling of them, um, the black jerseys. Yes, was this week. All right, and so we had media day pictures the other the other week. Yeah, they were like, "Hey, Mose, Dean, Mikey, we want to do a video with this." And we were like, "All right, cool." So media day, we have forty guys taking pictures. Yeah, basically from on our off day, our first off day of fall camp. Yeah, we're spending our day taking pictures, which cool, whatever. I posted them. Fuck, I mean, get yeah. pictures. All Good right, looking guy. Thank you, I appreciate that. So. We got to stick around until everybody's done. Yeah. In order to take these pictures because they don't want like people to see and shit like that. And we're like, all right. So we wait around and t- we w- we started taking pictures at one and we came late. So pictures started at like 1130. We came late so that we didn't have to wait that long. We were there till 530 because our guys like doing photo shoots. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. So we had to wait around. They got to get them. They got it, yeah. So it's for the we, gram. It's, we, for the it's, gram. For, it's for the gram. I get it. I get it. Um, they got their reasons. They want to take pictures. So wait around. Rush and take these pictures. Get the video, whatever. And I, I had no idea they were going to unveil them. I thought we were going to wait till like game week or something. Right. So I walk in. I see these two big ass... Uh, uh, the mannequin things? The mannequin things. And I'm like, oh, shit. They're doing this right now. And so we did it. Everyone was, I mean, it was, it was pretty, it was, it was pretty cool. Honestly, it was, is I've never been a part of anything like that in college. So it was super cool. You always see it in like videos and shit. Like they'll do right. uniform reveals or locker room reveals, shit like that. So I thought it was super cool. I was fired up. I mean, rumors go around and shit like that. So yeah, finally being able to unveil them and, and show the public and, and 
get them get the get the fans excited. I mean, oh dude, I feel like they're gonna appreciate the hell out of it, and we're gonna sell that thing out for sure. Yes, um, yeah. the merch is gonna be sick. We're black. I gotta make I gotta make some bring the Jews blackout merch for sure. You're gonna you're gonna have to. I have for, to for sure. For sure, some blackout headbands. I know that. So it's oh, it's, yeah. it's it's gonna be exciting. We're we're super fired up for it. It was it was it was cool how they did it. I think it's cool. You know, that's one of those little things in college football where. You've been grinding all year. You go through fall camp, and Fresno State's one of those schools where we do have, you know, we kind of we like shiny things, right? Um, like Alabama would, they, they're they're going to stick to what they do. Penn State's going to stick to what they do. They might do one cool throwback or something like that. But like at Fresno State, you got to mix one of these in every once in a while. For sure. Got so you. what's what's your favorite uniform combo now that the blacks are out? You got to see how the blacks go though, too. Yeah, you got to see how the blacks go. It's it's going to look pretty sick though. I mean, it's. It's gonna be hard to top those. I like the all red. The all reds, it's just sexy. I want to get some navy thrown in this year. I like the navies personally. Um, we have not worn those in a while. Did you not wear the all navies last year? Last time y'all it was wore, two years ago. Last huh? time y'all wore navy was the San Diego State. Game. San Diego State. It worked. It worked. Barely. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there was something going into that, but I mean. Shit, the whole philosophy behind the uniform, go the red wave. Let's wear red. Let's go wear red. Let's go wear red. So, but I'm excited. I think it'll switch up a little bit, things like that. Um, I don't know the official uniform combos. I've seen like a little sketch and outline of what they want to wear this year. So, I think it'll be pretty good combos and stuff yeah. like that. You get excited. You, if you look good, you, Why feel not? Good, you play good. Exactly. Of course. So, I mean, it's not like you think about it all the time but at the same time it's something that's like oh shit okay well, we're going to switch it up a little bit have to be baby guys get their guys get their drip going no big deal but yeah the blacks are going to be hard to beat i'm not going to lie but we'll see how it goes <clears throat> speaking of looking good i noticed your facial hair is really taking a step oh man i thought you were going to bring this up all right talk to me about it yeah so Fuck, there's really not much that goes into this. Um, well, there's a lot that goes into it. I, I, You know what? I appreciate it. Yeah, That's some great feedback right there. I almost shaved it off the other night. Just because? Just because. We, As men, we go through these stages. Just because. Like, I need to make a change. I just I just wanted to. Yeah. And It itched. It, yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just not really feeling this. I put my chin strap on, and I felt some whiskers, and I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm not, I'm not, doing, I'm not dealing this with, with this anymore. And then I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll keep it. I'll yeah, I'm gonna keep it actually. And then I come over here, and Frank tells me that it looks great. So you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this shit. I appreciate it. I needed that, buddy. So that's all it takes. Thank you. Never um, know when you're gonna make someone's day. Exactly. So Be no, nice I, I just really wanted to try it out. I mean, tried it out, stuck with it. Yeah. Went to summer with it. So fuck it, I'm gonna go to the season with it. Let's do it. Exactly. Let's go. Yeah. Yes, sir. I love. It. I got. I think I'm gonna make a change pretty soon here. All right. I don't know what it's gonna be. It's gonna show up one day. Might have to bring the Pat Hill handlebars back, man. I might have to bring the Pat Hill handlebars, bro. Some big old, just some chops. Some chops right there. Could be good. Speaking of chops, Skip, he got the nod. First of all, love Jeff Tedford. Love him. Love Jeff Tedford. Yep. Wish him great health. Wish him great success. Hope wow. he's in the part of the program. Skip got the nod. How fired up were the boys? Because I know it was deserving, and I know that bowl game, he had passion. He has the juice. Skip yep. has the juice. Yep. How you feeling about it? Let's go. Yes. Like, yes. Let's go. I already knew the answer. I needed I to hear it. I, I needed everyone else to hear it. Let's go. And this yes. is this is me speaking on behalf of the entire team. I mean, really, let's just let's get it going. So yeah. We're fired up to have him. He's fired up to be here. I mean, that guy bleeds. Bleeds. Exactly. Yeah. So... This is that's that's a valley guy through yeah. and through. I mean, could be at other programs and things like that, but he wants to be here. That's really the, the gist of our coaching staff. They want to be here and they want to win at this place. So him getting the the nod to be the the head coach, the interim. He's the head coach. So yeah, it's it's really unique and cool to see. I think that it's it's a different perspective for sure. Having a defensive minded coach, I think that it's super cool. He and en, en, enables us as, on, on offense to really just go and make some plays. Yeah. Um, I've got a, I've got a pretty good relationship with coach skip. Uh, so appreciate the hell out of him. Obviously love the heck out of Tedford. Coach Tedford is the reason that I'm here. Right. So, um, just appreciate him and, and wish him nothing but the best, but you got to handle, handle business first. He's got to handle his health for sure. Um, and, and 
you appreciate a guy like that because of what he brings to you outside of the football field too. Right. So you want him to take care of himself outside of the uh, outside of the field too, because he always is checking in on. He knows everything about my personal life, everything that's going on within that, um, what I did over breaks, anything of of that sort. I mean, we're talking about it all the time. So a great, just genuine person, um, and and a truly just an authentic and and really cool guy in, right. in all honesty, but. Nah, we're ready. We're ready to get it going with Skip, and we want to bring him some win. We want to bring him wins and 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 success, and and just do this thing the right the right way for him because he gives us everything that he's got. So we're gonna we're gonna play for him, players no coach doubt. for sure. Yeah, love that. No doubt. Fires me, fires me up, dude. Yep. Fires me up. God damn it. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those. It's that time of year, baby. It's just it. it, it this episode could be more perfect because it's that time of year. It is. It is that time of year. I mean. Every single time that it comes around, I'm in year four of this cycle, but it's fuck. It just it's it's a, it a, 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 a flip. A switch is being a flipped. Switch is being flipped. I mean, everything in my perspective has just completely like shifted, and it's yeah. crazy because I've every year that the season ends and you get in the loop of the off season, you're like, how does that? How do you even get in that mindset? And yeah. it just is naturally there. It is because I mean. We're dialed right now, You're dialed. And, and I'm dialed too. Like game plan wise and things like that, I'm super excited because get into that process again, it feels good. Yeah. And school starting again, everyone's off of the, uh, everyone's excited, everyone's getting ready. Camp's for done. Ball. It's it's time. Week baby. zero's happening this weekend. I'm f-ing fired up. Oh, I I'm can't wait to, to watch it's, them. It's back. It's the best time of the year. So. It's the best time of year. I want to buy a pumpkin. Oh, God. I want to buy a pumpkin. All right, shit, buy a pumpkin. Then. I want to buy a pumpkin so bad right now. All right, yeah. I was laying in bed last night. We're watching Prison Break right now. You seen Prison Break? I have not. Oh, dude. I've seen some clips though. I've seen. No, I, clips. I never saw anything until I started watching it. Yep. Phenomenal. Really? You a big show guy? I'm a big show guy. Tell me your tell me your top couple shows. Top couple shows. Okay, let's go. All right. Um, I watch I watch a lot of different shit. Honestly, like I'll put like documentaries up there like the of last course. dance is is i love that i don't count that as a show you watch breaking bad i have not watched breaking oh bad. my god have you seen dexter i have not god De- game of thrones okay i've seen game of thrones i've right. seen game of thrones right. yeah i've seen i've seen game of peaky thrones. blinders have not seen guys the four out of the four top five i've not seen peaky blinders see. you know what a big one is people love my parents love sons of anarchy have you ever seen uh, that it's one? it's not top five. It's good. It's good. Okay. It's not top five. Maybe I'm not as much of a show guy. Maybe no, I'm yeah. you got to focus on ball. But eventually, <laughs> shows just take so long. I can sit there and watch it. I can sit there and watch a two hour movie. Nah, just watch film instead, Mike. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, Don't worry exactly. About it. I'll watch the shows for it. I'll, right. I'll tell you how good they are. All right. I appreciate it. Spark Notes right there. <sighs> Mikey Keen, fire me up, man. Get your piss hot. I appreciate you, man, coming on the show. Yes, sir. Um, of course. Wishing you great health, lots of blessings, lots of wins, lots of touchdowns this year, baby. No doubt can't uh see you on the other side exactly a week from now we were just talking about it too yeah michigan baby you're gonna be at a f-ing dinner right now i'll be at a dinner what time will it be there no it's it's like 10 10 12 right there i'm a late i'm a late eater he's a late eater all right he's i'm actually late. an early eater that's a complete lie fair enough eat at like 4 30 p.m you never know what i'm like a 90 year old person at an elderly home you never know what happens mash up these potatoes man. Mikey Keen, later June, QB1 for the Fresno State Bulldogs. Be sure to come out, watch him at Valley Children's Stadium. But before the game starts, come to the Bring the Juice Tailgate Show. Yes. Get fired up. Check out some of these Valley Grit hats. We've got a lot of new merch coming on. I don't know. Some of the players might be rocking on, some of them not. We'll see what happens. Don't want to get too deep into it. Um, but support the boys. You got to uh, come get your Bring the Juice calendars yep, okay. calendars calendar shout out yep mikey keen has not yet we haven't done our collab yet but uh i know i was gonna ask you about that yeah I'm you mad about it I'm you ready. mad about it hey, you ready I'm not, I'm not mad about it i'm not mad about all right it. we'll wait we'll wait a little bit we'll give the right. d-line some love yeah i had to get the d-line i got, I got the, my boy lightfoot on there today. yeah lightfoot got a little love today got a little actually, little actually. yeah yeah smile, uh, he's a little he tries he's a little cheeser that's all right <laughs> but uh seriously support the dogs and uh Stay fired up, get your piss hot, Army of Grit. We will see you next week. Hell yeah, sounds good. Appreciate it.